Okay, so let's look at a situation that has more than one angle involved with it. In this case, we have two billiard balls that slide over a frictionless horizontal surface. The first ball has a mass of 5 kilograms and is moving with a speed of 4.5 meters per second towards the second ball that has a mass of 2.5 kilograms, which is initially at rest. All right, so our ball one uh, has a mass of 5 kilograms and it is moving with a velocity of 4.5 meters per second. Ball two has a mass of 2.5 kilograms and is moving at zero meters per second. <clears throat> so those are our initial conditions. So here is our ball one and it's going to be going, let's make a nice long straight here, this direction and it's going to collide with ball two. Okay. So that's our initial situation. After the collision, both balls have velocities uh, which are directed at 30 degree angles on either side of the original line of motion of the first ball. So our original line of motion of our first ball is just the direction that it's going. And it could be going straight to the right, it could be going this way, it could be going this way, it doesn't really matter. We can define this as our x-axis. So we're just going to take this and make it an x-axis for us. Which then that means our y-axis will be, look something like this. Okay. So after the collision, <clears throat> both balls have velocities which are directed at 30 degree angles on either side of the original line. So it doesn't really matter which ball goes this way and which ball goes this way. Um, let's just say that the first ball goes off this way at a 30 degree angle. And we don't know the velocity, but it's going to go this way. So we're just going to say ball one goes that way. So then ball two is going to go off at a 30 degree angle this way. And <laughs> obviously those are not to scale. But this angle right here is 30 degrees. This is ball two. And this angle right here is also 30 degrees. If I would have used my protractor, it would look a little bit better. So what we want to know is what is the velocity of each one? Okay. Now this one gets a little bit complicated because what we have now is um, velocity in the x direction and velocity in the y direction for both ball one and ball two. So let's just start with x. So we need to resolve these into our components. <clears throat> so this is going to get a little bit messy. So this right here is going to be the velocity of ball one in the x direction. This will be the velocity of ball one in the y direction. And where did my pin go? Um, this will be the velocity of 2 in the y direction, and this will be the velocity of 2 in the x direction. All right, so those are our components there. So we'll start with um, the x direction, just because. So here we know that momentum is conserved in the x direction, and it is also conserved in the y direction. So the momentum in the x direction to start with is going to be equal to the momentum in the x direction to end with. So we want to write this out, the momentum in the x direction of ball one plus the momentum in the x direction of ball two. Now these are not stuck together, they're all, they're both going off in different directions. So we have x1 final plus x2 final. Okay, now Ball one is going straight. So remember, we're measuring from that original uh, line of motion. So our original line of motion is actually just in the x direction. So this is going to be just the x momentum, the total momentum of ball one. And then our ball two is not moving, so it doesn't have any momentum in the x direction. 
but then we do have final components. Okay. Oops. There we go. I'm writing too big. So the mass of 1 times the initial velocity of 1 will be equal to the mass of 1 times the final velocity of 1 plus the mass of 2 times the final velocity of 2. And these are in the x directions. So from here we can plug this in. But what we want to kind of keep in mind is that our x direction velocities are not in a straight line. And so our x direction is actually the, uh, these are going to be the adjacent, yeah, the adjacent lines. Here's our angle. So this is going to be the adjacent component. So this is actually going to be the cosine of our velocities. So when we write this out, we can write this as m1 v1 <clears throat> is going to be equal to m1 times v1 final times the cosine of theta plus m2 times v2 times the cosine of theta. Okay, so this is not just a straight velocity. This is, we have to find our components because we're at an angle here. So from here, we want to plug in what we know. Um, we could solve for this, but uh, I kind of like to write it out just to see where all of those numbers come from. So let's scooch down a little. Again. So our mass of 1 was 5 kilograms. Our velocity of 1 was 4.5 meters per second. Our mass of 1 doesn't change. Um, and then we have V1 times the cosine of 30 degrees plus uh, 2.5 kilograms times V2 and the cosine oops, of 30 degrees. We know that angle. So we have all of that plugged in. Now what we can do is we can kind of reduce some of this down. So if we take 5 times 4.5 we get 22.5 meters per second. So we actually have two variables here. And so what we want to do is kind of reduce this down a little bit as much as we can. So we can say that we have 22 and then 5 uh, kilograms times V1 prime cosine 30 degrees plus 25 or 2.5 kilograms of V2 cosine 30 degrees. Hmm. So that doesn't help us a whole lot. So what we really need to do is we need to solve for either V1 or V2 using our Y information. Okay, so right now we have two variables that we can't really solve for. So let's come up here and see what we can do with our Y. Okay, same thing. We have PY in the, in the <clears throat> P1 in the Y direction, and we have P2 in the Y direction is going to equal PY final in for 1 and PY final for 2. And again, um, this is 2 is 0, so we have the well, actually, both of these are zero because our initial ball, ball one, is moving only in the x direction. So both of these are zero. So that's kind of helpful. That gets rid of some things. So zero is equal to the momentum of y1 final plus the momentum of y2 final. So what we get here is the momentum or the mass of one times the velocity final in the y direction of 1 plus the mass of 2 times the velocity final in the y direction of 2. Okay. Now we can set these two things equal to each other. We can bring 1 over here. Well, let's do this first. Ah, okay. 
So the mass of one is five kilograms. And the velocity of one in the y direction is going to be the opposite, which is going to be the sine function. So the velocity of one final times the sine of 30 degrees plus the mass of two times the velocity of two times the sine of 30 degrees. There we go. So now let's reduce this down and solve for this right here. So the velocity of one prime, which is final, is going to be equal to uh, 2.5 kilograms times V2 sine 30 degrees. And then we're going to also divide by <clears throat> 5 kilograms and the sine of 30 degrees. So this is kind of nice. So what we actually get is V, the velocity of one final is going to be equal to 2.5 kilograms times the velocity of two final divided by the mass of one. Yes. So now what we can do is we can bring this down here and plug it in there. So let's do that. All right. So we have this expression here for our x. And we have this expression here from our y. So let's come over here and put 22.5 um, equal to Oh, what are we going to be equal to here? Okay, so five, this is going to be big, <coughs> kilograms, V1 prime, <coughs> which is 2.5 kilograms times V2 prime over five kilograms. Okay, oops, what happened there? Um, times the cosine of 30 degrees plus 2.5 kilograms V2 prime times the cosine of 30 degrees. Whew. So what we want to do is kind of reduce some of this down. So we can say that, let's see, 22.5. <coughs> oh, this is nice. This, we get rid of that. So we have 2.5 uh, V2 times the cosine of 30. So let's put that, let's just do this. Plus 2.5 V2 prime cosine 30 degrees. So these two things are the same. So what we can do is we can combine these. And what we end up with is... 22.5 equal to 5 kilograms V2 prime cosine 30 degrees. <laughs> so let's uh, solve for V2. So V2 then is going to be 22.5 divided by 5 kilograms and the cosine of 30 degrees. And this is going to work out to be 5.2. So this is nice. So now we have <laughs> the velocity, the final velocity of our um, second ball to be 5.2 meters per second. So from there, we can come up and plug that in. Um, what do we know? What's the easiest one up here? Let's see. Uh, we know that the, let's do that. That's the simple one. So we have M1 times V, uh, yeah, that would still be, that would still be true. So M1 plus V1 is going to be equal to 
m to v2. So what we have is we have 5 kilograms times the velocity of 1 times 2.5 kilograms times 5.2. So the velocity of 1 is going to be 2.6 meters per second. So there's our second velocity. And these are both at 30 degrees. Um, v2 we sent this way at 30 degrees. So we can also put here, we can say that this is at 30 degrees uh, south of west. And we can say that this is 5.2. Yeah, we sent it that way. So this is 5.2 <clears throat> at 30 degrees uh, north. Oh, it would be east. It would be east. I got my directions mixed up. Right is east. Okay. So our final velocity of ball 2 is 5.2 meters per second north of east, and the velocity of ball 1 is going to be 2.6 meters per second, 30 degrees south of east.